Hi guys, my name is Sanjay Gupta, I'm a consultant in York. Today I wanted to do a little video on the subject of blood pressure. Uh, if there's one thing that causes a ton of anxiety, it is the mention of high blood pressure. A common scenario, for example, is that a patient goes to see his doctor uh, for a routine visit or an unrelated complaint, and then the first thing the doctor or the practice nurse will do is measure their blood pressure. Then the doctor shakes his head and says, oh, your blood pressure is a little high today. Uh, maybe you should come back again and have it checked again next week. And if it is again high, then uh, we will consider putting you on tablets. And the poor patient is immediately left feeling really anxious and worried about this. He goes home, he consults Dr. Google, and everywhere he looks, there are these horror stories of how high blood pressure can cause strokes or heart attacks or kidney failure. Uh, and then when the poor, terrified patient goes back to the doctor to have his blood pressure checked, he's already so anxious and unsurprisingly his blood pressure is measures high, which then triggers off more anxiety and the prospect of taking medications for the rest of his life. So this video is for that patient and my aim is to help that patient understand and demystify the concept of blood pressure uh, by asking the doctor three important questions uh, before contemplating medications. Okay, as, I, as far as I see it, this number, the blood pressure number, is only important for two reasons. One, the number is a symptom of something else going on in the body, and in which case the aim should be to try and identify the cause of this number being high and treating it, okay? It doesn't make sense to make the number look prettier. I give tablets to lower the number if the number is a sign of something else because if you just treated the number, then you're missing the underlying problem. So the first thing I would say is that the number is important if it's a sign of something else, in which case you want to identify it. And two, the number by itself, if the number by itself is causing harm, then that's important too. Uh, and in that sense, in that case, it does make sense to make to reduce the number. If the number itself is causing harm, then it does make sense to reduce the number. It's also true to say that we are all different, okay? And therefore, it doesn't seem logical to me to have this one value um, which defines everyone. Uh, so the current guidance, for example, in the UK where I am, is that if your blood pressure is over 140 over 90, you have high blood pressure. Well, that doesn't make sense because we're all different people. So why is why do we have to rely on one value to define us? Surely what we want to know is whether that blood pressure is high for that individual. So instead of asking, is my blood pressure high? What we should be asking and what we should get the answer to is the question, is my blood pressure high for me? Okay. So here are three questions uh, that you want your doctor to answer for you before you even start worrying about your blood pressure, all right? Uh, so the first question you have to ask is, what is my number? You know, what is my true accurate blood pressure? Now, the first thing to say is that the blood pressure in number fluctuates wildly in everyone throughout the day and night. And it depends on so many things. It depends on what they're doing, whether they're stressed or relaxed. It depends on whether they're exercising or they're at rest. It depends on whether they're awake or asleep. So it doesn't make sense to use isolated values to gauge whether a person's blood pressure is high or not. In fact, all the blood, in fact, the most inaccurate way of measuring blood pressure is in the doctor's surgery because the patient is stressed, it is a artificial surrounding, and it is not truly representative of that person's blood pressure. So this kind of poor patient who's gone and has his blood pressure uh, checked, that's an inaccurate value, okay? Uh, a more accurate way of measuring blood pressure is to do serial blood pressure measurements at home, or an even more accurate way is to have a 24-hour blood pressure monitor. The 24-hour blood pressure monitor, what that does is it makes automated recordings of the blood pressure several times during the day and night, and then it allows the doctor to calculate an overall average. And that average is a far better uh, and more accurate representation of the blood pressure rather than isolated values. So <clears throat> the first thing I would recommend, you know, if you're faced with the prospect of having high blood pressure, is to ask your doctor, 
what is my number? Please do a 24 hour blood pressure monitor and tell me what my average number is. And you'll be surprised because actually, very often the average number is far lower than these isolated values that are measured in the doctor's clinic, uh, upon which a lot of doctors will start patients on tablets. So that's the first thing to do. The second question to ask is to say, is my blood pressure a symptom of something else? Very often the high numbers that are recorded are a symptom of a suboptimal lifestyle. Excessive weight, smoking, uh, a sedentary lifestyle, excessive alcohol intake, excessive stress, poor sleep patterns uh, such as sleep apnea can all contribute to an elevated blood pressure. And I would always recommend that whenever patients are diagnosed with high blood pressure, they take a long, hard look at their lifestyles and modify those factors that could be contributing. This is really important because if you just take pills to make the numbers look prettier, then in some ways you've not really tackled the underlying problem, which is the bad lifestyle. And therefore, the overall risk of the patient is largely dictated by the bad lifestyle rather than just the blood pressure number. So taking a tablet to make the number look prettier doesn't really dramatically alter that person's risk. It's far better to tackle all those things about the lifestyle, which may make the person healthier. And in so doing, the blood pressure numbers will also improve. Finally, the most important question is that you have to ask yourself is, are my numbers causing me harm? Are they doing me harm? Is the number, is my number doing me harm? Okay. Now, everyone worries about being at increased risk of strokes and heart attacks and kidney damage. But the truth is that these risks are only realized in the long term, meaning that if you've had several years of chronically elevated high blood pressure, then there's a risk of having such events. However, to expose you to this risk, there must be a degree of low level damage going on in the body, right? It can't be that you have nothing going on in the body and 10 years later you have a stroke. That wouldn't make sense. So something must be going on in the body which may not be visible to the outsider uh, and the patient doesn't realize it and then 10 years down the line they have something which is a, a, a big event like a heart attack or a stroke or something like that. Uh, the, now, the so to expose you to the high to the risks, the the kind of those big risks, you have to be having a degree of low level damage happening in the body chronically. Uh, the problem with high blood pressure is that if the blood pressure is high, then our tiny tiny blood vessels, the tiniest blood vessels, which happen to be the ones that infiltrate our organs and supply our um, organs with oxygen rich blood. They tend to be also be the thinnest and most fragile. And if you have a blood pressure which is high for you, then that number uh, does increase the risk of these tiny blood vessels getting damaged. They often can burst and then they heal by clotting off. And therefore, those areas supplied by those tiny blood vessels don't get the blood. And so because you have millions of tiny blood vessels, one or two doesn't make a huge difference. But over a period of time, as you continue to damage more and more and more blood vessels, you continue to get increased levels of low level damage, which uh, a person may not be able to see or sense from the outside, but is, are going on in the body. And eventually they culminate 10 years down the line with a bigger event like a heart attack or a stroke or kidney damage we can look for such low level damage okay in particular we can visualize these tiny blood vessels in our eyes in the retina so a simple look if your doctor looks at the back of your eyes he'll be able to see whether there is any effect of damage to these tiny blood vessels you can see tiny little hemorrhages in the eyes um, similarly the tiny blood vessels also supply our kidneys and if the blood vessels in our kidneys are affected then even before our kidney tests go become abnormal, you can detect that the kidney start leaking more protein because, um, and this protein, extra protein can be measured in the urine. So that's another way of detecting low level damage before any high level damage occurs. Finally, if the blood pressure is truly high for that patient, then the heart would have to work harder to pump blood around. The heart is a muscle and therefore if 
the heart is working harder, if the muscle is working harder, then the muscle will hypertrophy or become more muscular. And you can see that easily by doing an ultrasound or an echocardiogram for the heart, and that will easily show whether the heart is looking more muscular. And if the heart is more muscular, then that does suggest it's working against a higher pressure for that individual. When we look at the majority, all, virtually all the research points to the fact that it is those people who have high blood pressure, who have high values, who have, or those people who have low level damage, evidence of low level damage, who tend to come to harm from high blood pressure, rather than those people who don't have evidence of low level damage, okay? Um, and therefore, when you can detect low level damage, it becomes really important to be aggressive with lowering the blood pressure uh, because the number itself is probably doing harm as well. So, of course, I would always recommend lifestyle modification, but then also aggressively trying to lower the blood pressure with medication. And I would say that is irrespective of what the number is. So if the number is, say, 130 over 80 and the person's got all this evidence of all this damage, I would still be more aggressive about lowering the blood pressure. Whereas if I had a patient who had a blood pressure of 150 over 90 uh, and didn't have any evidence of low level damage, then I wouldn't be so aggressive. I would still recommend lifestyle modification wherever possible, but I wouldn't necessarily jump in and give the patient medications. So, you know, blood pressure is far more complex and I hope that this video has been helpful in helping those people who worry about their blood pressure. You know, you want to answer these three questions. Um, what is your true number? Is your number a sign of a bad lifestyle? And finally, is your number doing you harm? And this will then allow you to decide what works for you. Um, you know, it'll give you an idea of what your number is. It'll give you, it'll allow you to work out whether there are any lifestyle factors that may be contributing and, of course, modifying them. And it, when you do modify the lifestyle factors, it's good to, again, use a 24-hour average to monitor your progress, right? Uh, and then finally, uh, whether you really need the medications or not.